we're sitting on a property which is at the bottom of the catchment, 15 to 16,000 hectares of the Wallabadar Creek. This was originally settled 180 years ago in the 1830s and it became part of a, a Wallabadar station in the 1860s. My family have been here since that time. I grew up in the land. I feel a connection to it. The catchment is the community. Our water serves and feeds the village. In this current drought, the 2015-2019 drought, the catchment for the first time in living history went dry. Clearly there was something going on and the conversation was around water security. We need to have water security because at the end of the day, there is no agricultural operation without water and there is no community without agricultural operations. Well, it started with the conversations in the local general store on a Saturday morning. It then evolved to a community meeting. At that point, access to a network of technical support and different people was very valuable from the likes of LLS. The Wallabadar Rehabilitation Project. It involves a series of on-ground works. We've been able to source funding from Catchment Action New South Wales to implement some of these on-ground works throughout the catchment with a number of different landholders. Water Gully, which was the initiator of this project, is a discrete catchment to the side of Wallabadar Creek itself. The initial problem there was riverbed lowering, bed lowering occurring, uh, an incised channel coming up through the catchment which is effectively draining the catchment. The local land service is a, is a fairly, it's fairly big family. We, we cover a, quite a range of activities from the management of feral animals through to animal health issues. We have the natural resource management side which assists with projects like this. The first element of my involvement in the project was to do an assessment of the area and, and Water Gully as a whole of system. I looked at historical information including parish maps the channel through Water Gully, we understood from that, didn't exist 200 years ago. So we then decided we have to do something here because we want to go back, that we've lost the function in Water Gully. We've put it in a series of bed control structures which are essentially designed to reduce the erosion, trap sediment. In terms of design, nature then became our primary design. We looked at the natural processes of recovery that would typically occur in this sort of situation. Trees may fall in. We've essentially created similar structures, logs. We've anchored them into the banks. We have put a geofabric into these to reduce the amount of water that goes through them and essentially create subsurface flow resistance as well as roughening the channel in such a way that it slows the water through the channel. We're creating stable conditions for the vegetation to then take effect and help the channel to recover back to a healthy floodplain with water. Having done those modest amount of works, we are seeing a very dramatic increase in the vegetation. We are storing more of that water in the landscape that would have otherwise been lost from the landscape. So we are rehydrating the landscape as, as we'd hoped. On the back of that success, we're looking at other parts of the catchment. I was born here and we've noticed over the last 20 or 30 years, the creek really is lowering. We don't have water that we would normally have. And we thought, what can we do to have water in our creeks, have feed on our land and for our generations to come, for them to have an easier time, really. But. It depends if everyone works together, really, if, if it'll work. I'm a, a Gamilaroi woman, and I'm from the Liverpool Plains area. We got involved um, probably a couple of years ago with some of George's ideas with looking at the aquifers and looking at the water in this area. Prior to that, we'd already been working on some cultural activities at our place. I think the, the two go hand in hand because we need to be looking after country and caring for our country, and that's a very important thing um, for Indigenous people, but I think for all people, if we, if we want to continue to sustain our earth and, and remain here, I think it's vital. When there's a group of people working together, which George has brought 
together and we talk about it, it just lifts everyone and, and you, you feel that, yes, it can make a big difference. The power of what a community can do uh, by working together and being able to instigate sort of uh, landscape change rather than just individual project. What we've seen there is a very rapid change. What it's enabled is a lot of other inputs into it, such as improved pastures and looking at water infiltration into the ground under different sort of uh, management regimes, such as different grazing systems. And it's really wonderful to see it in operation and, and see how it's functioning. Now, to a lot of people, they haven't got the resources to put those sort of structures in place. And what we're trying to emphasise is that's what's achievable. Our goal as the, as the local land service is to, to make the community more resilient for the changes that are taking place. We have had some incredible results in streams and in pastures. We're looking for a community consensus about the principles and the way we want to manage this country, which keep us productive. The major benefit of this for me is the re-establishment of our relationship with a broader community. This is about feeling the power of people working together to do something productive.